The purpose of the momentum explosion activity is to give us more experience with the concept of the conservation of momentum. We've already done an introductory lab well, where we rolled two ball bearings together and found that the momentum of the combination of the momentum of both ball bearings before was at least supposed to be the same as the uh, momentum of the ball bearings after contact. We're going to show that that also works even if both objects start from a stationary position. In this case, we're going to have two frictionless carts. One cart will have a spring-loaded plunger. The other cart will not. You can see right here that you have Velcro, little Velcro dots that will have the cart stick together, and I'll show you how you do that in a second. First thing the instructions tell us to do is to weigh both carts. Assuming we've already done that, I now need to put the carts together. So I need to push in this spring-loaded plunger, which I'll show you, give an example of right now. So you push it in, it's got the little slots, so you kind of got to push down and then click up, and then you have the spring-loaded uh, latch right there. That's how you get the plunger to come out. Then you'll stick both carts together. Now you notice I'm tapping it on both ends. If you tap it and it rolls a little bit and stops, then you've probably got it balanced. But if you tap one direction, it rolls and rolls and rolls, then it's probably not very balanced. So now I have the two carts velcroed together and I have my uh, spring loader release button or pin right there ready to tap. So then I'll take the video physics. You can use whatever you want. It turns out the uh, black, long black weights look, work really well to tap that spring and get them to explode apart. And then we'll use our video physics like we did with the ball bearings in order to find the velocity of, this, of the card on the right and the card on the left. And the total the total momentum should be zero, and we'll see how close we can actually get. An example of actually doing it would be as follows. And that's all there is to it. Here's an example of the second step where one of the carts has the long black metal, the long black weights. And your lab notebook example shows you how to do that, so they fly apart again. So you'll do six different trials, and your lab notebook example gives you the data that you're supposed to use, how much weight you're supposed to put in each cart. Good luck. This is how I want the momentum explosion activity to look like in your lab notebook. We'll list down, this will be the same for all of you, how many bars you have on the left and how many bars you have on the right on the carts. You'll start with zero, then you go one, two, and then you go one, two, two, and on the right-hand side, the right-hand cart will have zero the first three times, then one, then one, then two. Then we'll actually, to be as exact as we can, we'll actually measure the, each bar is supposed to be about 500 the, grams or 0.5 kilograms and each cart is supposed to be about 500 grams but I've found they differ a little bit so we'll actually weigh the the car with the uh, bars in it so that will give us the actual mass and you can use grams again because in momentum all the units are going to cancel out the labels will cancel out out so in my made up example I used I took the video and I found my uh, velocity afterwards. I went ahead and used the prime because the velocity in this lab, the velocity beginning velocity is zero for both of them. So I know my initial momentum is going to be zero. So I measured my velocity of the first cart and my velocity of the second. You notice one of them will have to be negative and obviously I forgot that to start with. My momentum for the first cart, momentum for the second cart, one of them will be negative because they'll be going opposite directions. And in this case, when I added these together, I got a negative 1,055. Now you can't do a percentage difference because you're comparing it to zero, so it wouldn't make sense. You'd be dividing by zero. But what we can do is find the percentage difference between these two, because there's between the two uh, 
momentums because they're supposed to be the same. So I showed my work down here. I found the first momentum uh, by taking the mass times velocity, my second momentum, my mass times velocity, and the percentage difference. I found the percentage difference of the absolute value. Obviously, if I subtracted this, I get a huge difference between these. But the absolute value of this is supposed to be the same as the absolute value of this. So in my made-up example, I got 1%. So, and then you would just repeat that. So, obviously, you only have to show your work for the first row, but you need to figure out, and uh, you can do it on your calculator or write it down for the rest of the uh, trials. So, you've got a total of six trials to do. Good luck.